So we're here today speaking with Jeff Herbst, who is the artistic director of the Northern Sky Theater in Wisconsin. Uh, who do, and Northern Sky does all musicals, all new musicals, all summer long, every summer. So it's an extraordinary uh, place for the development of new musicals. Uh, Jeff, can you give us a little bit of your background and tell us you know, what your background was in the theater and your training and what led you to the wilds of uh, Wisconsin that we can see beautifully behind you right now? Well, I was one of the lucky people who got to grow up in Wisconsin. It's a beautiful state. Uh, and I grew up in southern Wisconsin, close to Madison. Mm -hmm. And all the way through junior high and high school, I was very involved in all of the theater activities. I was lucky to grow up in, in Mount Horb, Wisconsin, where there's this great and glorious ongoing tradition of, uh, of including as many people as possible in music. They, every summer they produce this, this Song of Norway, that kind of old stodgy musical that was all Greek music, but they did it faithfully and, they, and often it was families who participated in that endeavor. So I was lucky to grow up in a culture where musical theater and theater and music was all greatly respected. So you could be a jock, you, know, you could be the high school football player and you could still be in the music. So we had great participation and everybody was really enthusiastic. So I had a really good growing up, you know, uh, stomping grounds for that. I went away then and had to graduate as a, a music theater major in Madison. And then I did grad school at the Oslo State Theater in Florida, which is a conservatory part of Florida State University, attached to the Oslo State Theater. And the thing I loved about that program is it gave me real training because they cast you in shows as you were appropriately, you know, um, as, you, as was appropriate. So that gave me a really good kicking off point for making my next trek to New York City, which is what I did. I moved there when I was in my 20s. At the same time, I got involved with this little troupe in Wisconsin called the Heritage Ensemble. The Heritage Ensemble is one of the predecessors of Northern Sky Theater. Mm -hmm. So when I was at college, I performed with that troupe, as did a number of us who remained uh, a part of the core company now of Northern Sky Theater. So one of the uh, co-founders started in the 70s, the rest of us started in the 80s, and I've been with the company ever since then while also doing professional work in New York and regional. But I started coming back here uh, when I was in college to direct, and that's when I first got my feet wet with directing. And then I came back in 91 for the entire summer. I got to work with Paul Sills on uh, original story theater piece. And uh, that's when Fred Alley, who I grew up with, and one of the co-founders of Northern Sky Theater, um, wrote his first book musical. And I directed it, and that began uh, a decade-long collaboration before Fred unfortunately died uh, in 2001. And then since 2001 until the present, I've worked with a whole new group of writers because it became necessary to do so. And that's how I got hooked into the musical thing. <laughs> hooked in is right, yes. <laughs> um, can, can you talk about, uh, has, has the Northern Sky Theater always been music, new musicals only? And what was the impetus for that? Because it must, be, it must be a challenge every year to come up with new musicals year after year after year. The founder of the Heritage Ensemble was a fellow by the name of Dave Peterson. He was an adjunct, adjunct professor uh, at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. He decided that he really wanted to try to resurrect a lot of the extant folk songs that had kind of been lost and that were sitting in a lot of university basements. And he was a terrific musician himself, a really good singer, and also a wonderful arranger. And he kind of discovered this little, uh, it was at that point, I think, just a, like a, a, a DNR, Department of Natural Resources, little stage in the woods in Peninsula State Park up here in Door County very small little footprint um, and they would do little nature talks on, on this little stage and he looked at it and thought i don't know why we couldn't do a little more than that so he got together a little group of college performers to do these reviews original reviews that were put together by him and them of existing material pieced together with with um songs i mean with stories with folk tales and that eventually evolved as more people got involved into original reviews using existing material. Mm -hmm. And then we took it a step further and started to write original book musicals with original songs. Mm -hmm. So that was the impetus for it. All of us, we sort of figured it out as we went along. 
um, and then obviously use the model that you guys use, which is great musical theater, to figure out you know lyric writing and book writing and how a book is it needs to be integrated. But we were still borrowing from our tradition of heritage ensemble. So a lot of our shows in the early days, especially, had a real identity with Wisconsin culture. We still do have a lot of that identity, but we don't limit ourselves anymore. Um, we encourage people to write whatever they want to write about that has to do with, you know, with good storytelling, frankly. And um, when we started, the, when we took over from Dave Peterson from the Heritage Ensemble, we named the, the company the American Folklore Theater. And we lived with that name for a while. And as after Fred died, and I was reaching out to writers in other places where that name didn't necessarily resonate, we thought it would be really smart to change the name so it became more reflective of the actual work we were doing. Because we weren't doing American folklore specifically anymore at all. We were really doing original book musicals. Yes. And uh, the Northern, Northern Sky Theater is what, what eventually we decided to call ourselves because it's reflective of where we are at the same time that it creates a bigger umbrella for people who you know, should be included yeah. as writers and, right. and, and uh, fellow artists. And it's certain, Northern Sky Theater certainly is reflective of where you are, so let's talk about that for a moment. Can you talk to us about where you are in the park um, and, uh, and the kind of audiences that you get because of that? And, uh, and feel free while you're doing it to pan around and show us the absolutely gorgeous <laughs> setting that you are in at the moment. <laughs> York County is, uh, it's, it's kind of a peninsula. I always say to people, you know, if you're thinking about Wisconsin, it's shaped like a, like a mitt. We are the thumb. So we're surrounded by water. And there are all kinds of nooks and crannies, you know, and there, York County has more shoreline than any other county in the United States of America. And you can see some of it right there. That's, that happens to be like the Lake Michigan side. Uh, and that is Bailey's Harbor. Which, by the way, is where Robin um, and Clay, Robin and Clay, yeah. Clay, uh, they, Robin was inspired by Bailey's Harbor, not only because your daughter's name is Bailey, but because it's Bailey's Harbor. And she, she initially wrote the, the show Windjammers to be reflective of a lot of the research that she did right here about ships that went down in Bailey's Harbor. So anyway, here we are. We're surrounded by this natural beauty. There's a one of, the, one of the most active and successful state parks in Wisconsin is called Peninsula State Park. It's here in Door County. There are four state parks right here in Door County. Um, and Peninsula State Park had this little performance venue where they did nature shows. And then the Hilton Ensemble took over all summer long and presented these reviews. And then we built a brand new stage in 2002. And we now have a 650 seat theater that's out there in the middle of this pine woods. You drive about three or five miles, depending upon which entrance you take to the park, to get back into where we're located. And then you take a walk through the woods until you get to the opening of a pine grove where our theater is located. And it's an open air theater, just to be clear. So yeah. it's, it's open yeah. to that beautiful northern sky. That's exactly right, yeah. Although, as you know, we are in the middle of a capital campaign to build a new campus um, on 40 acres. Our summer home will always be the park, so we'll always do outdoor performances, but we will also now have an indoor 250-seat theater, which will give us the ability to do, I think, more extensive and um, less limited material because we'll be able to have an intermission. We cannot have an intermission in the park right now. We do, we do one act. Yeah, it's, talk to us about that. Your audience comes from the park. They've been busy all day kayaking and fishing and whatever they do in the park, and they, the whole family comes to the show, right? And, and talk, talk about how that, uh, what the setting is and why it is you can't have an intermission. <laughs> yeah, so the honest, the honest answer to that is we don't have the bathroom facilities to manage having 650 people decide that they're all gonna do that at intermission. <laughs> That's just the bare, you know, that, that's just the truth. We are, as part of this capital campaign, going to be replacing all of those facilities, so it will be better. I don't know that we'll ever want to do an intermission out there. I love one-act musicals. I think they tell great a great story. And I think that it's about, it, it's a really good limit for, you know, for your park experience. Um, so yeah, people, people come in from all over, not just the park, 
we do offer a discount to people who stay in the park, but we don't require a park group for people to come see our shows. So people drive in from all over the county and we get a lot of Chicago traffic that comes up for the summer um, and they're vacationing with their families and all of our shows are appropriate for people of all ages. That's another one of the parameters that we have for writing for us. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge, but I think it's a really good challenge. It means that you can have grandpa, grandma, mom, dad, and all the grandkids come to a show together, and people do that generation after generation. Yeah. So now you have you now you have you know people who come, and they will say, "I came here when I was a kid, and now I'm bringing my own kids, and even in some cases now my grandkids." That is amazing. So, That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Now I know um, as you were, you started reaching out a number of years ago to to find uh, ways of getting more new musicals on your stage because you're always looking for new musicals and and uh, we we hooked up and uh, started talking about having our writers develop shows for your stage, and in the right. number of years since then we've been uh, uh, lucky enough between us to have three shows get their world premiere. Uh, on your stage, and it's been a wonderful collaboration, uh, starting with the show you were mentioning earlier, Windjammers, written by Robin Scher and, uh, and Clay Zambo. Um, can you talk a little bit about, about the three shows we've done together and what that's been like collaborating with a writer's organization that's on the other side of the country? Yeah, well, the remarkable thing about the three shows that we've done in collaboration with New Musicals Inc. is all, that they're really entirely different from one another. Windhammers is a period piece um, set like the 1870s, and it's all about uh, schooners on the Great Lakes and the tragedy that can sometimes befall some of those outings. It was extremely dangerous um, work at the time. Uh, so Robin really hooked into that story and wrote a lovely piece with beautiful music by Clay that is really reflective of that history here. Uh, the second show that we did was a, a melodrama, which we had never done before. We'd never tried one, uh -huh. and it was um, and it was Peter Welkin who had also worked on Windjammers um, throughout that piece's process. So he had come to visit us, and he he knew our theater from having been here. So he said, "I think a melodrama would be great out there." I don't, you know, are you open to it? I'm like, I'm totally open to it. So they wrote that lovely, fun entertaining piece called When Butter Turns to Gold. Yeah, and, that was that uh, was uh, yeah, Peter was Peter was the book writer on that. Uh, Randy Wolf wrote the lyrics and Ron Barnett wrote the music. And uh, yes. yeah, it was it was a lot as fun for us to work on too. And Ron has since worked with us on orchestrating two more pieces including the third collaboration which is the world premiere this summer called Oklahoma in Wisconsin by Richard Castle and Matthew Levine. Right. And uh, that piece is set in the 50s, and it came out of an idea that you guys had um, uh, generated, which was, why don't we do an evening of small pieces about inns, you know, where people, fam generations of families come and stay, and we'll piece them together, and it'll be sort of this evening of these different little vignettes about families' experiences of staying in Door County inns. Richard and Matthew wrote a little 15, maybe it was 10, 15 minute um, vignette with an opening, closing song and a little scene in between the two of them. And I came out to see the evening of these presentation of vignettes, theirs being one, and I said, I really like those two songs. That's a great opening number and it's a great closing number. All you need now is a one act in between those two <laughs> songs. Can you write it for me? And they did. So that was the inception of that show. Yes, yeah. and we, we, we were so talking. It, we, were, the yeah. we were talking to Richard and Matthew uh, just uh, as part of this series, and they were talking about the fact that when you said that, that you wanted them to put a show in between that opening and closing number, uh, they had to scramble for a while because they had never considered that, and so it took a little research. But Richard did his research and came up with, I think, an absolutely lovely, lovely story about yeah. the talent scout who comes, or the, the location scout who comes up to see whether or not the movie Oklahoma could be made in Wisconsin, um, right. and, and hilarity ensues. Uh, and, right. uh, and that's running right now, isn't it, when it's not raining? When it's not raining, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, yeah. That's yeah. right. Three uh, shows a week. That's yeah, great. It's, it's proving to be quite popular. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Uh, so, yeah, talk. You were involved with that show from the beginning, too, at least, obviously. And yes. you, I mean, you guys know what it, what it means to do rewrites and to just kind of, because when we first looked at that piece, 
when when you know there were there were a lot of things to solve around what what would work and what was believable and whether or not we cared about the protagonist was one of the biggest questions we had about that piece mm -hmm. you know because he sort of in a way you could you could you could cat categorize him as a bamboozler yeah but in fact what he is is he's somebody who is just full of passion about wanting to see this thing happen and he never intends to do anything hurtful to right. this family right and in the end deems himself and i think you know that's the thing that we struggled with was how do you how do you make that how do you make sure that that's all believable and it is it's lovely yeah it's a bit like yeah. the it's a bit like the music man which i'm sure was partially in richard's head when he was writing it that idea of a bamboozler who then is who then is uh, transformed and redeemed uh, by yeah. by the heart of the people that he meets, but um, yeah. and, and and speaking of the process, Jeff, I mean, I think what's been interesting about our process on all three shows is that we have um, we we've on various occasions had our writers and uh, generate lots of little short ideas for you to read in paragraph form. We've put together several of those kinds of evenings you mentioned, where where writers would would uh, sort of pitch an idea by by having um, a, an idea and just a hand a couple of songs in a scene so that you could think about which ones to go forward with, and then we've gone forward with first drafts of shows that you're interested in. But I would say that, that um, what, what's really important is that after that, once you've identified a show that has a first draft that interests you, it has always been essential for that team to go to Door County and actually see the shows in the setting, get to know the people before they can uh, attempt a rewrite that, that, that you guys can consider doing and, and workshop it with your own folks. That's the path that they've all taken. They really need to be there to get the idea yeah. of what to write. I decided uh, after the first couple of forays with um, with what was then mapped New Musicals Inc, um, where people had written full drafts and they had never been out to see us, I thought that's not fair because there's a you know there's a whole thing going on here, and if you come out here and you experience it and you sit in that audience and you watch one of our shows. I think you're more richly informed than you can ever possibly be by having me come out there to try and explain it to you. So the commitment on, maybe not with Windjammers, I can't remember if Robin and Clay came before the first draft was done. I don't think so. I think that one was already done. But they certainly came once they decided to retackle that piece. Yes. yes. Because originally, remember, there, there was a stamp music in that show. Yeah. That was part of, that was part of the idea of Clay's. Yes. And, and then they, I think they shelved, they shelved that piece for a little while. Long time, and I yeah. said, Yes, and I said, come out to Wisconsin, come visit us, come see us, come feel it. Yeah. And after they were here, and after Peter was here, I think, well, all three of them maybe, they went back to the drawing board, yeah. and there was, a, there was a, a renewal of that piece which became the one that we did. Yeah, and I think I think that's a lot to, on Peter because he was directing the piece here and he had such a love for it that he, he didn't want it to go away when it wasn't yeah. quite the right thing and people were ready to move on. And he, he yeah. knew there was something in there that would work and so he really pushed it and, uh, and, it, and a beautiful show came out of it. Yeah, it, it is a lovely show. Absolutely, a lovely show. absolutely. And then, I, um, and then after that, uh, I had Randy and, and Ron come out with Peter uh, before they wrote the first draft of Butter, they had written some some scenes, but not an entire first draft. Right. And then I also had Richard and Matthew come out after I saw their little vignette. Before they wrote their draft, I had to come out and visit. Yeah. And I have to say, you've been you've been very supportive that way, Jeff, in that you've been willing to to find funding to bring people out in order to experience it and to have workshops with your own actors. And that's right. that's made it right. possible for that to happen. So that's, well, that's great. That's, that's turned out to be more critical than I can even say. Um, you, you guys have an incredibly talented group of people that you work with at New Musicals Inc. I too have a, a, an incredibly talented group of people here. Um, what I also have here are people who've done this for a long, long time, done this. Mm -hmm. You have people who've done that. <laughs> and the, you know what I mean? Yes. And the two, the two are really close, but they're also in some ways a parallel and the jumping across the track and getting on the other side of it is sometimes really critical it, I think it was essential for Oklahoma and Wisconsin I don't think that piece would have happened if I had not been able to workshop it here with my actors yes yeah
Yeah, I think that's very true. Um, and I, uh, you had mentioned, when we were doing our little pre-interview, Jeff, you mentioned something about how pleased you were with the way we make our writers prep their materials to go into rehearsal. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have you give a little commercial for how, how persnickety we are about the preparation of materials. Yeah, for, for starters, the score is always clean. And that means that when we do remounts of our, our productions, so when you're doing an original work, if you don't come out of this process with a clean score, you're sunk. Um, there's no way to archive it. There's no way to remount it. But even more importantly, while you're going through the new works process, if you're not able to be able to take a, a Word document or the script and integrate it fully with the score, you, you waste a lot of time. You waste a lot of rehearsal hours. Mm -hmm. So the exact way that you guys number your pages. I mean, oh, this is really detailed, but the exact way that you guys number your pages in Word and then you number your score is perfect. Integrating them for us is not always the best because we do so much rewriting. It's great for a read. Yes. It's really, really great for a read because then everybody can quickly get to where they need to be through that master document. Mm -hmm. But being able to pull them apart and have a separate Word document and then a separate PDF score, but be able to slide them together is perfect. Yeah, it works great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, don't that's... don't don't uh, undervalue the, the the work that that is because it's critical mm -hmm. for an organization like ours to be able to just seamlessly get get to the work. Right. Without right. you know, I mean, if you're if you got people constantly flipping, constantly having to renumber by hand, forget it. You you you've lost precious rehearsal hours. Yeah, and that that has to do. We're we're very insistent that the uh, that all the dialogue that happens within a song is actually in the score. So when an actor is reading through a score, they don't have to flip around and find the book material or find their way back at the end of the song. And uh, it, it it seems, as I say, it seems persnickety. But when uh, but in development, rehearsal time is always limited and at a premium, and you don't want to be wasting it on that kind of stuff. No, the the integration of the dialogue within the score is absolutely brilliant it's 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 absolutely brilliant people use it absolutely i mean it's... actors will just take this you know until they know the music the song is in their score once they know the music then the script is in the score yeah so it's yeah. it's great yeah and we even go so far as to say if you if you've got a, a song that has verses we don't uh, we do not uh, 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 like the idea of the verses repeating, you know, like verse one, verse two with the lines under them. Because again, when you're in rehearsal, verse two might have different choreography, different lighting cues, all kinds of different things. And so you, you can't be scribbling uh, on verse one and verse two and verse three, which one goes with which. So we, we believe in exactly wasting right. some paper and uh, making sure that, that, uh, that everybody has the tools they need to succeed. The other person who appreciates that is the choreographer. Exactly, because you just can't be putting three, kind, three verses of choreography on one page. Um, so, so Jeff, um, uh, I, um, I, I want to ask you a question that we've been asking everybody that we've been interviewing. And since you said you're in the middle of a capital campaign, the answer to this might be moot. But we've been saying, um, in a fantasy situation, if you were to wake up tomorrow morning and discover you suddenly had a hundred million dollars that you could use earmarked towards the development of new musicals, what would you yeah. use it for? I think. I mean, part of my vision for this place, Elise, is to have, um, I, I would love for more people to be able to experience Door County. It's the perfect place for people to visit because there's so much going on here and it's so beautiful that if I were able to fund an ongoing symposium conference, have what you do there happen here, mm -hmm. um, that's just a short term project year to year. I think would be invaluable for us as an organization and for your writers. Yeah. It, it would be, I mean, you, you know, because you talked to, you've talked to everybody who's been out here doing this. Richard and Matthew, mm -hmm. they came back, they were on fire. <laughs> they had a, they, they had a lovely time, not just working, but also just being here. And I think the integration of that is what makes successful art is that you have to, you have to feel like you've got, that your soul is being nurtured. And if you are feeling like you're being fulfilled, not only on an artistic level, but on a personal level, because what you're doing is looking around you and seeing natural beauty, what you're doing is looking around you and you're seeing integrated arts. Uh, the visual arts are well represented here. Uh, the musical arts are well represented here. We have a symphony orchestra that performs here in the, in the falls. We, I mean, there's so much going on here. And our little piece of that is 
it's really it's critical and i think that when people experience it they understand how critical it is so the ability to have a lot of people come visit us and do their work at the same time i think would be a lovely thing that would be awesome i'd, I'd be i'd be the first one to to line up there you go. to come yeah. see that place well, you know, I mean, scott's been out here you, yes. you know he knows mm -hmm. how, how great it is to be here at work yeah i'm, I'm waiting for my turn it'll come uh, yeah. uh, to, to wrap up, Jeff, I want to ask you a two-part question, um, at, which is, uh, what do you see as the future of musical theater? And you can keep it as, as it relates to your own organization or, or more globally. And, and with that in mind, what kind of advice would you give to the writers who are trying to write the musicals of tomorrow? Well, it's interesting. I mean, when, when you see a show like Hamilton, which everybody knows and caught fire, um, that's the kind of show is is not far at all, far away at all. The musical genre is different entirely from what we've done here. We've not done any rap. But in terms of, I do a show called And the Collective, which it, every four years, it's all about, um, it's all about presidents. It's all about campaigns. It's all about that humor. It's all about, you know, it's all about biography. And um, what, what I see here happening here is, important storytelling that can only be done in this in this manner it, 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 the limitations of musical theater are right for this kind of storytelling and um one of the things that i i i love about what happens here is i have somebody who says i've been doing some research and i found out that in world war ii german pow's were shipped over and they were put on trains and they were sent to door county to be migrant workers on cherry farms how does that sound for a musical? I'm like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and we have a show called Victory Farm, all about that very experience, mm -hmm. because somebody found out about that story, and they, they thought that it would work best as a musical, and they were right. And it's lovely. And I, why not keep doing that? Why not keep finding those stories that come to life and are told in this very American, very interesting and I think forward-looking genre. I think it. I think it's just starting. Oh, that's fantastic, Jeff. And uh, and I. Um, I think that we have to make sure that we very shortly have another one of our infamous uh, idea-generating meetings, where we yeah. have writers come up with a pitch of a whole bunch of ideas at you, so we can get the next thing in the pipeline uh, after Oklahoma and Wisconsin. Uh, it, it's been an amazing uh, relationship, and we've been uh, excited to be a part of it. Um, I think uh, maybe maybe we can uh, say goodbye. Uh, as we say goodbye, I'd love it if you'd pan out and let us see that beautiful lake view again. And, <laughs> and we'll say... Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you so much, Jeff, for spending this time with us. Uh, I hope it doesn't rain very much for the rest of the summer. And we'll look forward to making more musicals with you. Thank you so much, Elise. Thanks My so pleasure. much. Take care.